Uh, we should be good. Hello, hello, hello everybody, everybody. Um, well, welcome, welcome to tonight's live stream. Uh, apparently, apparently, you should have someone else help me. So, we're all really late, 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 we are class four one uh, four eight four. Uh, we're delighted tonight. Um, I'm JD, by the way. Uh, if you've not met me before, I'm our community director, and I'm joined today by Jasper from Rivet Games, one of the uh, the community manager at Rivet Games. Hello, Hello Jasper. Jasper. Hi. I'm just trying to fix. Hello, Jasper. Uh, Fix Hi. JD's audio. I'm just trying to fix. Oh, hello, hello. hello. Did we not get any any stuff? Stop. 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 We, we didn't, didn't unmute, unmute that. that. Uh, so I hope. Shall I, Shall I talk, talk again? again? Let's, talk, Let's talk, again. talk again. That'll, that'll, that'll fix, fix everybody. everybody. I hope so. I'm really, really sorry. That's a lot of <laughs> ladies. They're not answering. Um. Okay. Is it? I guess I know what it is. Okay. It should be good now. Okay. Let's talk again. Is that better, everybody? And I'm sorry if that's lots of echoes. Sounds good. Yay. Okay. Brilliant. Fantastic. Oh, okay. Let's start again, shall we? Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's stream. Uh, we're all melting, but it is. Uh, we're all excited as well for the uh, the launch of the Island Line uh, 2022 colon BR Class 484. I'm joined tonight by Jasper, Community Manager from Rivet Games. Hello, Jasper. How's it going? And now that we've managed uh, to get over those initial hurdles. Oh, good evening. No, it's good. It's good. <laughs> really looking forward to tonight's stream. Brilliant. And we have a new guest on the live stream tonight. I'm really delighted tonight to be welcomed by James as well, who is uh, a environment artist. Have I got that right, James? Yep, that's correct. Brilliant on the uh, and it was instrumental in putting together the island line. So we've got another member of the Rivet team coming to join us on the live streams. Could not be happier. Really glad to get some new faces onto the live streams. And uh, so, yeah, uh, island line is now live. Uh, we've had some really great feedback already. It's been I, I know that um, release days are always a little bit nervous for, I think, everybody within Rivet, within Dovetail. But actually, we've seen some really, really positive, nice feedback so far. We hope everybody that's got it is enjoying it, using it as a really good excuse to get out of the sun uh, and, uh, and and be able to kind of enjoy something in slightly cooler conditions than I think we're all in at the moment. Um, I am currently melting. So apologies if I get a little bit of brain funk at some point tonight. Um, <laughs> so tonight, what are we going to be doing, Jasper? What, what, what are we going to be showing? How are we going to be showing it? Um, so we're on PC this time. It's still a death build, but it th I think it's the one that went live, um, or at least it's really close to it. And we're going to jump on two timetable drive, just one up the route in a in a summer condition, and then one down in probably something winter, freezing cold. Uh, so we can cool as all yeah. down. We can only dream, eh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be well, we're better to go when the weather is as hot as this than the Isle of Wight. Uh, we're gonna be talking a little bit over the course of the live stream about how we how you uh, how you guys at River have made the uh, the add-on and a little bit of information about various different Easter eggs and fun bits that players might not have noticed to begin with. Um, but we're gonna keep it quite loose tonight. So if you've got any questions, please jump into the chat. We're gonna take them as we go through, and uh, I'll ask them as and when we uh, as and when we get a little bit of a break in proceedings. So uh, yes, but yeah, do you want to just give a quick introduction to everybody uh the scenarios um and the um uh, and the services obviously we're on the services right now do you want to go give a little bit of a quick introduction to it yeah sure so we have a total of 56 services that's the real life timetable as it is right now um then we have five scenarios which are all themed around uh, a heavy sun thunderstorm going on and there are quite some cool things you can enjoy and discover in the scenario so it's definitely worth checking them out not just the standard a to b um i won't spoil much more than that <laughs> and then we have the two uh, tutorials root introduction as usual um yeah 
I would say let's just hop into the into the timetable and see what we got. Lovely. And uh, before we, I mean, feel free to get everything set up. Yes, but I wanted to just ask James in terms of the the work that have been undertaken to to get this uh, to get this out because I know. Um, Obviously, we have the the older Isle of Wight route, and I know that you worked quite heavily on that. So we'll talk a little bit perhaps about that uh, in the actual live stream. But this has basically been rebuilt from the ground up, hasn't it? Yeah, completely. So it's been quite a unique challenge, to good for the, especially for the stations, where once we rebuilt the stations as they were, and then we had to go then on top of that, put the 2020 upgrades as well. So it's kind of almost double the work for the stations. You've got the original platforms and then, of course, the, the raised platforms. But yeah, everything was built entirely from the ground up. Brilliant. Uh, and I say, we'll, we'll go in, we'll see what some of these are all about um, when we get into it. Uh, we are going to be playing with safety systems tonight. I know there's a bit of feedback from last week's live stream, so we are going to turn safety systems on tonight. Um, and the other thing was, uh, we are going to be doing this in the sunshine. I know that, again, a few people were a little bit upset that we uh, we did the, uh, the first scenario in the rain. Um, I think it was more wishful thinking than anything else at the moment could do with a bit of rain. Uh, oh, yeah. But uh, in, instead, we're going to be doing everything in the sunshine today. So you can see it uh, in, uh, in its, all its glory. Actually, let's just start with the safety systems because they are all over here on this on this Cullen board, or the switches board. And the first one we need to do is enable the master switch, which, cut, which cuts out all the other safety systems. Then we have the TPWS, which we can cut in. We have the DRIS. Um, the DSD and the AWS and you can hear we've got the self-test now that we need to acknowledge so that's it all good and I'll just briefly want to run over to the other end and change the, the headlights back there while people start getting into the train Oops. No. Perfect. Lovely. So uh, we're starting at Shanklin, aren't we, tonight? Yes, yeah, sorry. That's one of the few stations that didn't have its platforms raised. They actually lowered the track. I think you can yeah. see that quite well, that the, the station appears to be much higher. Which yeah, is... there's also another detail we, we didn't have in the original Isle of Wight. As you can see, where the, I think the track was taken out as a second platform, which is now disused and turned into kind of a, a planter, which is now an extra detail we've included. Lovely. Yeah. Do we want to go to the little sign at the back as well? I know there's a lot oh, of love yeah. for that last week. Let's show. Let's show the sign. <laughs> a bit of my handiwork. <laughs> That's really really cool. Yeah, James, we face that. It did get a lot. It did get a lot of love last week. So uh, I think uh, we, we I, I love these little touches. I think this just makes it feel a, a lot more alive and a lot more, um, I, I guess, immersive into the world of uh, the Isle of Wight. Because it is kind of a, it's, it's a, it's a. If you've never been, it is kind of a place in its own. It sounds like a silly thing to say, but a place in its own right. It feels very Isle of Wight, uh, without really knowing how to describe it. And I think you've kind of captured the essence of that really well with this. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm certainly familiar with the Isle of Wight now. I haven't done it twice. Uh, you know, I, I've been there so many times, but never in the Isle. So I think now it's uh, it's somewhere nice. should really take a trip. I thoroughly recommend it. Um, yes, but just while we when we get started, you want to kill our face cam so that players can see uh, yeah. everything that we're up to. So we've got this. This scenario is about uh, sorry, scenario service about 25 minutes, isn't it? Uh, we're going to go to the pier. Exactly. So we'll show that off. Um, so, so James, when we're when we're talking about the, um, we, we kind of alluded to the the platforms being raised or the uh, um, the, the the tracks being sunk. What were the kind of the biggest challenges from an from an environment perspective when you're putting something like this together? Um, I guess having the source material that we have for the older route helps, but in some ways it also doesn't help as well. Yeah, it certainly did because almost having those old models, you, you almost attempt to just use them, but you, you can't because the route was entirely built from scratch. So if we were trying to do that, the, you would find because the, the track has been laid and improved, those old platforms won't actually line up and they'd be the wrong height. So it was kind of a unique challenge to sort of merge some of the existing assets in some of the station buildings with all the new stuff that was created. But um, certainly, they're not. 
Yeah, absolutely. And it, again, it seems like it's, it should be a, okay, raise this thing, and make this thing a little bit smaller, but actually it has a far more, far, far reaching impact, I guess, than, than just oh, yeah. raising something or lowering something. It was a single thing that we just spotted in nicely. Everything is there to be done and retouched up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, especially at the stations like uh, Braden and Shanton, where we did that was just completely remade the, the platforms because they're so drastically different from how they were uh, back in 2020. Absolutely. Um, so, yes, but do you want to give us a quick, uh, we'll wait until you get into the station, um, do you want to give us a little quick rundown of some of the things that have been included within the Island Line 2020 uh Route, well, route slash loco, that's what we were calling it last week, weren't we? Um, that perhaps, if you have the original Isle of Wight route, it's going to be different this time around. Um, so, yeah, sure. So, most obviously, the, the class 484, the new train that comes with the Island Line 2022. Um, overall, a much higher quality in, in the scenery, much wider spread out to the left and right, which you can just truly feel if you're driving down the route and looking outside the windows to the left and the right. Well, this is not a perfect example, but yeah. Yeah, the, the river has <laughs> did a great job of expanding the, uh, the scenery. It gives a great feeling that's an immersive world. That's what I think we've built up such a big asset library these days in our previous routes. And they just have got so much more to work with to sort of yeah. bring the world alive. You, you really feel that in, in, in the small details on, on stations with signs and bins and uh, the PAS system that's been added now, which the old route got as well. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, the updated stations in all the places. Um, we've added in uh, a nice little feature on the train where it actually emits some sparks if it changes the, the third rail. Um, I think it's more likely when it rains as well, so it goes yeah. well with the... Yeah, with the, the, the yeah it depends on the weather. The yeah, yeah. And then we have, just in the scenarios, uh, it's, it's like a themed scenario pack, if you want to have it that way. Um, where you have lots of extra interactivities at least. Um, so yeah, and we have new signal models as well. Yeah, while we're passing with one. The LED system that used on the train from the zone as well, so they look great. Yeah, that's quite lovely. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Just way higher detail overall. The new water, which the old route got as well. Um, yeah, basically. We took everything we've learned in the past years um, and put it into this route. Yeah, and I think so. You can see you can see the uh, the end product here. And um, I, I say we were talking about this last week, but when we were going through it, it feels like a it feels like a very kind of complete route. It feels like there's not an awful lot that we would want to do at this stage to change it. I know when we, one of the things that I was particularly impressed with when we were going through this last time round was actually the amount of uh, area that you can explore as well yeah. on foot. Um, we'll try and do that again at some point, but um, around some of the stations you can actually you can sort of wander a lot further than you would have normally been able to and in, within a lot of other Train Sim Mod 2 routes more than you can go. Um, yeah more routes than you can go normally so um, I think that feels like a really and there's a lot of nice little touches as well that we'll probably touch we'll probably go to um, over the course of this stream that again might you might not notice straight away but if when you explore the room when you spend more time looking around and uh, finding out a little bit more you see these Easter eggs and you think oh yeah that's really cool I like that yeah, I think there wasn't a single station that didn't get a lot of extra mod points. So even like superficial details, like um, in this version, you can see that part of the fence has been replaced with a metal fence, which is in, in real life. It was, a, it was a chance to sort of really give the stations the love they deserved. Yeah, just getting a couple of people mentioning about mastery on the route. Um, I'm just going to investigate that. Uh, I can't answer that at the moment. I don't know if uh, I don't know if it's tracking or not. It should be. But uh, I will do to double check and see if uh, see if I can get an answer for people by the end of the stream. Should be yeah. Uh, the mastery title is quite cool, so it would be a shame if that's not working somehow. Yeah, that's one of the little signs that we made to show when the stations were opened. Yeah. Are they are they like the proper people in the UK will know this, but like the proper blue plaques that you might see, or are they kind of representations of what? Uh, no, they are they, like? 
they should actually be exactly as they are in real life. It's one of those things when I was looking at all the reference images, you kind of start making a list of, oh, that would be cool to add, that would be cool to add, and you think, you know what, I've got an hour or two, I'll just do it. And it kind of brings the stations alive. I think the kind of signage goes a long way to making the places feel real. Even stuff like the planters that Yasmin was just showing off, that was something I had like a downtime between the projects. I thought, oh, that would be a fun little prop to make. Oh, and we've got a rogue passenger there. I think I think there are a couple of people that have mentioned about a rogue passenger, so we are going to yeah. take a look at that. Yeah, yeah. We've seen uh, quite a few stations, unfortunately. So close the doors and head off to the next station. I'm already late. I'm probably not attempting to be on time with this. You can it's just blend the heat on the tracks. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. too much to show. It would be a shame to rush through it. You can do that for yourself then. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. We're we're on our own time here. Don't worry about don't worry about timelines. Sounds good. So um people might have noticed as well the audio that's gone into this. Uh, we showed a little slideshow last week of one of Rivet's audio engineers who got the recordings from the 484s uh, in the Isle of Wight. Um, so if you're interested in that kind of thing, take a quick look at last week's live show. It's about halfway through. Um, we showed some pictures, uh, but all of the audio is uh, the real deal. Um, and I think, as I say, there's a lot of players that have been commenting quite positively about um, about the uh, the audio of the, uh, the, the train. Yeah, I signed out Josh did an absolutely fantastic job. He, he visited the other way through the course of the weeks and he took a bunch of extra reference pictures, which was really great for me because there were so sort of dead spots that had to just go like, what do you remember was actually there? So it, it was like a double whammy, able to get a little bit more realistic because he was able to take hundreds of pictures. But yeah, he recorded all the sounds live. Well. He still did those nice little details like uh, the right here in Esperance, you can hear the water sort of lapping in the waves. There's a lot sort of ambient noise which makes the platforms feel a bit more alive. Brilliant. And you mentioned kind of obviously kind of filling in the gaps and someone's taking photos might help you be able to do your side of the deal uh, more effectively. Are there any other examples of that from, from the dev developer perspective? Because I'll be honest with you, I don't know my head from my tail with this kind of thing. Well, so I would just say like a, a massive thank you to the, the rail fan community because without uh, people taking pictures of these stations, you know, uh, when we do that service, you, know, you can always take some pictures. There'll always be little areas that miss, but thankfully, if you were to, to go to like, uh, Google, Flickr, any of these kind of groups, you can find thousands of pictures to get the reference you need. So, without that, we would just really struggle. You know, the uh, signal hub as well, and there's, thankfully, there's so many tourists and fans that have taken pictures of that, you know, that, that helped me immensely you know, to get the detail that, that people expect. Yeah, it's amazing really, isn't it, that all of this is generated from, well, mo there, there are obviously other source materials that are, that are used, but a lot of this is generated from things like static images and, and things that have been taken by people unsuspectingly. That yeah, it's be. funny to think someone going on holiday or doing like, uh, some train spying that's helped, uh, helped make a game several years later. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Someone in the chat has asked if there are any four car services uh, for, for the route. I think we answered this one last week, Jasper, didn't we? Yeah, there are no four car services. Just like the real timetable, it's only two cars. Um, you can have four cars in the scenario planner or in the uh, scenario stuff. So there is a way to get four car services. Nice. Seeing a little bit of uh, feedback that. Uh We've had so by the sounds of things, there have been some problems with YouTube live streaming. So um, apologies if you're watching, you're getting a bit of a rubbish quality of, of live stream. We are aware of it, but I'm not sure there's a great deal we can do about it at the moment. If you are watching on YouTube and you are experiencing problems, we are streaming also on Twitch uh, and on our Facebook page and our Steam page as well. So if you want to head over to one of those, that's absolutely fine. You might get a slightly better experience because YouTube is being very temperamental tonight. And we're coming to Braden as well, which was maybe one of the stations that got the, the most drastic changes despite the fact that uh, it didn't get its platforms raised. Hey, so can you go into a little bit more detail on that, James? Well, what kind of what kind of other things did you do to this that obviously without raising the platforms or lowering the uh, the tracks, what, what what has been done to braiding? Well it's for one it's 
Google knows it's got a passive loop as well, so we've got the second platform in. And then originally that was all uh, disused, so it had sort of uh, grass growing through it, it didn't have any fences, anything like that. So if you were to go to the other side now, you'll see it's a proper functional uh, platform. It has all it has extra benches, lights, uh, signage. It's got the nice uh, picket fence, the whistle boards. It's got just a lot more love and attention compared to its, its disused stage. And then, of course, you know, at the end of the uh, platform is also the very, very dramatic uh, crossing. Uh, you know, we debated whether we should have the player actually be able to access the crossing. But to do that, we'd have just had to have the gate open. And as they make a big thing about, please latch the gate, we thought it would be a bit bizarre if they were actually open all the time for the player to cross. So unfortunately, you can't actually cross it. But you can you can jump down and cross it anyway if you want. Because I, mean, yeah. I think in reality, you have to call on that yellow phone to actually uh, open the gate and then cross to let them know that someone's using it. So that whole area got so much love and attention and, and extra detail. And then, of course, there's the signal at the other end. But there's also little details, like as I said, there's extra signage. Uh, there's the disabled access ramps you can see, which are all over this station in reality. Do we want to go to the signal hut? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> it's my labour of love. I was going to say, <laughs> I feel, I feel like we need, we need to go to the signal hut. We need it to. It was so good, so good. Well, right, right, you've got the flowers on the front, which make it look a little bit more scenic. Uh, it's overall a better shape as well. It's a lot more accurate, but uh, of course there's the interior, which is, you know, as I said, my oh. as well. All the accurate switches, the proper color order, which is funny because if you look at pictures of, of the signal, it, it, the, the signals have actually changed quite a few times. The switches have been painted all different sort of colors. So in the end, I just had to pick the most recent photograph I could find and, and go off that color. So there's ones, if you look, you can find ones where all the, the switches are white. But uh, they should be all up to date in the correct order as well. So if you to look at all the signs, they're correctly labelled. I can only imagine how much of a nightmare that was to put together. <laughs> uh, just a bit. But, uh, you know, to be honest, there may have been a couple of late nights. But, you know, when you see it in game, you see the response to it, it makes it all work. I, I, I'm so proud of it. Yeah, it's very, very good. And uh, hats off. Round of applause for all of those little accolades. Uh, it makes it James, all worth well it. done. Um, and then there's silly little details like this, the signalman hat and there's the, the mug as well. It's, it's it's lovely it's yeah just being able to walk in here and watch out to the trains see the trains yeah if you set it back. in the rain or in the snow it's, it's yeah. surprisingly cozy it, it looks it looks stunning especially like in the in the night time when the little light is on it's, yeah. yeah and i think these kind of details go just a long way to, to sort of bring the route alive you know there's just that extra layer of sort of player interaction and exploration you can enjoy yeah. and for me as an artist that's you know that's half the fun <laughs> it's just like saying, what else can I add to the route to, to make it more interesting? Absolutely. Uh, we'll get kicking started and then we'll talk about the uh, the livery, shall we? Because, uh, um, as I say, players might have noticed this isn't a, uh, a licensed livery. This is a fictitious livery. Um, but it does have the Island Line name and I believe the logo as well. Uh, is the logo... logo not the logo, okay, it's just the, just the name Island Line. There is a reason for that, um, and we mentioned it a couple of times last week, Yes, but if you wanted to just mention it again to everybody who might not have been around last week. Yeah, absolutely happy to. Um, so it's kind of a bit complicated case with this one because the license is split into two parts, and so the actual livery and the logo is owned by Great Western Railways. Uh, Great Western? South Western? South Western. SWR, yeah, Southwest. Um, and we couldn't get the license from them, um, so we couldn't do delivery. Um, but we could get license for the Wording Island Line, which is owned by the Department of Transport. Um, so that's why it's in this in this between state where it has like a originally themed livery, so we tried to, to capture the overall look and feel of the, of the original livery. Um, but it's still got the original uh, wording on it, so yeah, that's, that's probably on well, probably that's why it looks like this now. Um, important to say, we're still talking to SWR and hoping to get delivery at some point, or the license for delivery at some point. Um, but it is like this in in the actual release mode. So. Yeah, and it's important to know we are still having conversations with SWR yeah. that, that it's not a done deal that it's always going to look like it is yeah. at the moment, which I think is still a really cool livery. Um, but at the moment, we can't promise anything because ultimately it's their intellectual property. So uh, yeah. that it's kind of their prerogative as to whether they actually um, 
they deem it a uh, something they want to work with us on. Um, so yeah, a couple of people have asked, well, why, why can't we get licensing? It sometimes these things work out, sometimes they don't. Um, we have conversations with lots of different um, rail providers uh, and all different kinds of other licenses, um, and some of them are really happy to work with with the likes of us, some are less happy, some need a little bit more assurance, some of them are slightly longer conversations. This is probably one of those. I don't know, I'm not in I'm not involved in the licensing discussions, but it feels like it's one of those progress is being made but it's a bit slower than perhaps we would see with, with other partners. Yeah. But in the meantime, nice. just like you said, I think we've done a great job with delivery. It feels like the original train more or less um, and looks great so but I can understand that. Yeah, but I can understand that people would like to look at like the real train. So, yeah, yeah I, would, I would recommend that if anybody uh, is uh, confused as to why someone like SWR might not necessarily want to be uh, involved with this, let us engage with them, let us speak to them. Um, would probably not go down too well if people were asking the questions on, on social media and whatnot and sharing the images and stuff. We can do that, don't worry about it. Um, Cool. Yeah, it's really nice to see so many nice comments in the in in the chat. I'm yeah. just taking a look, and uh, there's a lot of people that are saying they're really enjoying it, which is brilliant. That's exactly what we want, and I'm um, glad that you're all having a good time with it and uh, able to explore and uh, find some of the little details that I think make this route really, really route slash loco. Sorry, uh, really, really good. Yeah, yeah, just, it's great for an artist to see the sort of stuff I've done for fun. And that little details of just actually the fans picking up and enjoying it. It's amazing. And it's like a feeling that never stops being amazing. It's just brilliant to see the overall response on, on every platform. Just, yeah, I'm going to echo JD, but it's it's great. Thank you really, really yeah. uh, much for the positive feedback. It's just, yeah. And someone asked about the cost of um, licensing as well. Sometimes, sometimes you have to pay. Sometimes you don't. Again, it's down. To, it's down to the discretion of the person who owns the, uh, the the license, really. And sometimes, again, it's a really mutually reciprocal, positive relationship that actually everybody wins from. So there's no money that needs to exchange hands or anything like that. Sometimes that kind of thing does need to happen. So, um, but we try and keep it as reciprocal as we can. The small project trim is actually quite a few nice changes there. Yeah, we'll, we'll stop at it if we, if we head in the other direction. Um, yeah, but usually you don't stop at it because the station is only in use if the yeah, steam it's train is wrong. Heritage line. Exactly, yeah. Actually, quite funny because you can't get to the station by, by anything other than train, so you can walk or drive to it. So you have to take one of the reference images and they actually just walked along to go see. <laughs> I imagine there are some really good liveries on Creators Club uh, as well on the uh, that have been created for the. Uh, so again, if you are interested, take a look and see what's on what's on there, because um, I'm sure there will be some uh, some really good applications of, of this livery, but there also are. anything else that, that that people might want. There are. I, I've seen one or two, and they look really really good. <laughs> good, good. Um, so we're coming to rides, John. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk quickly about um, signalling? I know that we mentioned it. Like, I know we've kind of gone past the the, um, the, the braiding pass. Yeah, but um, do we want to talk about that? Like, will we go past them later, or do you want to mention them now? I can just briefly talk about them, but we'll, we'll show them off properly, or proper uh, later on. Um, but it's basically that we have the existing ones, which are the semaphore and the old light signals um, here. In the um, in the path around right um, and then we have these updated signals in braiding and Todd Shanklin um, which uh, like we mentioned before are using the new light technique from uh, the RAB 523 yes, from the yes burn LEDs. exactly yeah so you can see actually the LEDs changing um, it looks quite cool uh, yeah and the, the, the entire model has been updated, so there's like an extra detail in the model, uh, in the mounting pad. Looks really good. Um, 
while we're at it, I just wanted to go up and show off the um, the guard panel. Yeah. So, that was such a cool feature. It's <laughs> just the animated key. I love it. Yeah, so first thing, you need to unlock it. Then we need to open the panel, insert another switch to activate the panel. And you can see that this light comes on. And if you click it, you're just opening the guard store, which is just the one. All that will stay closed. Then you can go out, make sure it's safe to open the other doors. And then we just click on release, and you can hear the alarm going. And the other doors opening. Get passengers in. Um, and because I've seen a, quite a few questions on this, okay, it's not the best spot to see this, but we have trains sitting here in the depot um, all day long, which is something yeah. that a few people. And there's a new walkway as well for the four four as well. And then, if we're ready to close the doors again, just hit close. All those were closed except for the ones uh, for for the guard door. Then you can see that the slide comes on um, to say that all those are properly closed. Then we can close the guard door. Turn the keypad off. Close the door. Uh, close the, the, the cover. Lock the guard panel. And that's it. So it's like it would be in real life. So you can go out and do what the guard would do. Nice. Neat, neat little feature. I really enjoy these these details. It's it's great to see that uh, our software engineer put quite a bit of time into it. Just yeah. And this is another sort of one you were talking earlier about the expanded area. So now that they can actually exit the station and walk along oh, the yeah. bridge, we take some nice screenshots. Oh yeah, wander around here and go up there. If we, if we lowered if we lowered the view a little bit because last live stream uh, you weren't able to look over the top of it but uh, I don't know I don't think so no 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 if we can imagine that we can jump uh, yeah but yeah it's, it's, it's a nice it's a really good opportunity to to go out and do a little bit more than perhaps you you normally do uh, when you're looking around the stations and the surrounding area yeah um, a couple of questions about manual uh, I'm gonna have a I'm just gonna check with the team uh, just to make sure that it's where it should be because um, I'm not seeing it on the Steam page at the moment so I'm just going to double check and see if we can get that added uh, as soon as we can that'd be great yeah uh, and then uh, the other question that I've seen is around asking about the PIS boards can we take a look at them so when we get to the next station we can sure yeah that's actually the second part of the PIS system which is the system in the train you can change what's on this little display and in the passenger area and on the, on the destination boards on the outside uh, by clicking these two buttons so you can cycle through them. I just completely lost... There we go. I don't want to get up now because it would probably slow down the train but we can have a look at, uh, at the next station. Oh, it's a nice car. It's a nice comment. Congratulations, Rupert. Fantastic DLC with so much enjoyable gameplay condensed into a smaller route. Proof that gameplay is far more important than brute length. Make more like this, please. Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. Thank you, LR. Oh. <laughs> 2412. It's just lovely to hear things like that. It's been great. Yeah, thank you. And the scenario builders did a great job as well to bring that, the routes to life, with the, especially at like the weather effects. Yeah. Thanks. Um, Volkalt Milk in the chat uh, chucked in the uh, the manual that River have put on their website. Uh, so if you are needing a manual, you can go to there. Um, but the link is in the chat. That's awesome. It's just the English one for now. That should give a good start. We are coming up to ride. Yep. And here's where we get to the seafront. Oh yeah. Well, close enough. Uh, a couple of people have mentioned about the uh, collectibles, the route map collectibles. Yep, aware of the problem. Uh, they, we're aware, and it should be coming in in a post-release patch. 
so don't worry we are aware of it and we uh and i believe james is it already fixed yeah i think it's going to be yeah. the next patch i was yeah. going to check this morning yeah cool actually let's wander around this in in the second um in the second service because there's so much to explore here okay so see you later guys <laughs> Uh, we'll come back and we'll take a second because I think we've done so it, again if you want to see I would say the full route in all its entirety we've probably managed to cover the majority of it in the, either the last week's stream or this week's stream uh, so uh, we should be able to you should be able to put two and two together um, to kind of put it to kind of get the full route of the experience we obviously want to try and show as much as we can tonight uh, and obviously we've got the benefit of having James here uh, to do some commentary for us as well so whilst we're perhaps not able to show it quite as much right now uh, do you want to give us a little quick summary James on, on what has improved at, uh, at the, the ride uh, Esplanade station yeah, I mean, there's little things like the, this proper bus station now, it's got its big bright um, yellow and blue colours, it's got things like uh, tourist uh, shop, it's got, I, I asked uh, Yasmin to take some nice scenic pictures of the routes and the train, and I stuck them on some postcards, there's some extra little details, like I think people have noticed along the route there's all these kind of inflatables and deck chairs and well, so it's all very fitting with the hot weather we've been getting. <laughs> and there's things like this, the ice cream shop as well, which anyone that's kind of eaten live might notice is the same ice cream brands from uh, our Cornwall route. Uh, I made those for St. Ives, uh, but if, I don't know if anyone spotted them, so they, they made a reappearance here. However, the prices unfortunately have changed from the early 90s prices of uh, oh. our Penzance route. So no, 99s are not, not 99p anymore? No, I think I put the price at like £1.20. Oh, that's you know, to, to be fair, high. to be fair, I'd take that right now with all the inflation as it is, so... <laughs> Uh, and especially on a hot day like this, somewhere yeah. at the beach. Oh, you could charge what you like on a day with the weather like this now. Uh, as you can, as we're going through as well, you should be able to see the new water textures as well, which uh, obviously very important, and they've been re-implemented re back into the old Isle of Wight route as well. Um, there was a patch that went through, I think, yesterday, which there are a few PlayStation 4 players that were having some problems with uh, with the textures. Um, we put in a uh, an improvement for that. There is still a little bit more work I think we need to be doing, but um, the the majority of it should be looking a lot better than it was. Yeah, yeah I was looking as well at any sort of issues with the walls. I was looking at that briefing this morning, so hopefully that should be resolved pretty quickly. Nothing. Um, and David Ham asks, why do the hovercraft not have the Union flag livery? Is it a licensing issue? Yeah, I think it was something we did look at, but we were worried about licensing, so in the end we just opted just to have them white like the original ones. However, there is a blue part at the bottom which kind of keeps the theme, but I think we were just a bit concerned because uh, we added fairly late. I think we didn't want to, to run the risk of any issues with the holocraft. That's fair enough. But the original ones were white, I think, if you look at the older photographs. But we did know there was a nice Union Jack one, and it would be cool to have, but I think it's kind of a strike in a balance. I like the uh, the bikes. Well, the bikes were, I, I'd made that for the zone, and now it's a good chance to sort of uh, bring them forward because it's a uh, new route. Actually, there's also the animated doors. That's well, so the closing, and that's approaching them. They're opening up again. And like in here, overall improved scenery as well. Yeah, there's things like this, the grandfather clock, the, even things stuff like this, the things that the floors have been changed. I think with the next patch, there's some, a few more additions to Ride Pier as well, which uh, really bring it to life. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> We're aware of it. So, yeah. yeah. It's Thing. There's also things like the new flower pots as well at that end. Oh, yeah. um, oh, like very, very colourful. Yes. <laughs> and there's Actually. also the disused platform as well, which has got a suitable amount of decay and uh, sort of dirt and, and grass to show it's disused. It's a lovely view. Yeah, it's great. Really enjoy it. Should we go end the service and jump in the winterly one? Let's do it. Cool us all down. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the fact sitting here in the room with a 3080 in the computer is, is 
not making it any cooler by any means. Uh, just, just looking forward to to shut down this computer later this evening. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's one of those, isn't it, where I think is hot. It's very, very hot. Then yeah. you add in to the mix the fact that we can't have any things like fans on because it ruins yeah. the, the audio. Yeah. Then you add in the fact that you're in, uh, you're currently uh, in a room with lots of technology in it. Then you add in the fact that you're trying to conduct a conversation and keep your wits about you and all that kind of stuff. That just means that I think everybody feels a little bit hot and bothered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I heard uh, a full day in extra sweltering hot computer as well as to run all the software for this. I'm looking forward to uh, stepping away for a little bit and enjoying the weather while I can. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, James, just do you want to give us... I, I realised that at the start we didn't really give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about what you what you do at River. And I know we said environment artist, but can you kind of talk a little bit more about what it is what your day-to-day -day looks like and what what it means i guess to be an environment artist within within the games industry yeah i'd be happy to so for the most most part i i make the the 3d assets you see that aren't the trains so anything that kind of brings the world to life kind of what a, a prop artist on a on a, a movie would do you know or alternative if you if for a more appropriate analogy you could think of if you were to have a model railway set yes you'd, you'd have your trains but you'd also have say like models of the trees the stations the little buildings and stuff like that so it's it's kind of the same sort of like airfix like that but in a 3d space so i would be making the station buildings the benches that kind of thing and then texturing them appropriately lovely and i say i think again one of the things that does perhaps set this apart from some of the other routes or locos that you might see within um tsw2 is just the, some of those little touches um, that we've kind of talked about over the course of the stream so far, and I think there's still a few more that we want to try and uh, talk about. But things like the uh, signalling heart, or the uh, or sorry, the signals heart, or the um, uh, the the little sign at the start of Shanklin, those kinds of things just add really, really add to yeah, the feel of the route. Yeah, for me, it's an artist. Any chance I get to sort of add that extra touch of love, I'll, I'll always take it. To me, it, it's the best part of the job. I'll sort of bring that extra detail of the like, uh, fun depth to the, to the world is, is, is a bonus to me. Yeah. So we are at Ride Esplanade. I know I've finally learned how to pronounce it. Um, I you have been saying bit. Esplanade earlier. Now well, I, I, think you see, I think it's a you say potato, I say potato kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, I really struggled with how to actually say it, even without that final art aid bit at the end. Uh, so uh, I think we. I'm, I'm uh, a northerner, so that's why it seems. Yeah, that's very true. Very true. Um, so yeah, uh, yes. But where are we? What about to be doing with this with this service? Then we're going from ride. Whereabouts are we heading to? Uh, so we're heading back to Shanklin. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do the full tour, but we are definitely stopping at uh, Esplanade and having a proper look around, wander a bit around, show off uh, the detail that James just mentioned, and have a look at the hovercrafts and all that stuff. Um, nice. See? Yeah, are you going to take a, long, a walk along the pier or across the bridge? Yeah, both. Have a quick look uh, at the pier and then wander around over to the hovercrafts. Uh, yeah. Show off the details in the station building as well. You can see there's also the new gates and uh, railings that were built to sort of block off the end of the raised platforms we just passed. They're all slightly different every station, they're all kind of strange because they always end too short. Uh, so if anyone thinks that looks odd, that's actually how they look in real life. Just one of these things that where, where companies do which you don't have to understand, but yeah. There is obviously an irony here in that we're playing in the snow in the hottest day in the UK that's ever been recorded. <laughs> uh, so. It's just escapism. So yeah, there's the tourist shop which has the uh, nice uh, pictures that Jasper took of the route and uh, properly put on postcards. Then if we come down here, we have what we all would like to have. Oh, give me a plowman sandwich any day of the week. <laughs> I can't think of a worse thing to have on a hot day. <laughs> the cheese would get a little bit sweaty, to be fair. Oh, I could deal with that. And you can get on to the pier and 
walk all the way down to the other end if you want to. There's also this the post box is being added there as well, which is a nice little detail. It kind of gives it a okay. feeling of Britain. This one. Yes. Yeah. And then there's the, the bus station as well with the appropriate colours and extra benches and flowers. And then we can go along here and walk over this little bridge here. It's amazing and it's stark how different it is in the uh, in the snow versus yeah. the uh, sunshine. Well, that is sunshine still, but in the, in the summer. That's what I was just. Oh, it's very 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 white hovercraft now. <laughs> Well, yeah, not exactly the best way to show off the blue parts I got, but yeah, they are there. You just have to use your imagination as well. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, if you go past the, the building behind the uh, behind the uh, hovercraft, take, I think it's a ticket office, it's part of the hovercraft station, I think. It's actually, that's an ice rink as well, so uh, again, keeping with the theme. Just out if you want me to to go anywhere else. Um, otherwise, I just just have a stroll around. And this is what we were talking about, kind of having a slightly more um, free reign to go and explore bits and pieces. Uh, it's, yeah, it's really I think cool. There's an Easter egg in, in one of those buses, but I won't spoil it. I think uh, one of the has had some fun with this area, so <laughs> uh, I'll let that for the players to discover some of the unique touches on their own. Yeah, that sounds like a proper plan. But it was definitely early on when we decided this route. We wanted to really open up the areas for the player just to to have new places to sort of visit and explore. And this is like one of the best examples. Of it. Just unique opportunities to take pictures of the train, like to, to look over the water and, and see it coming down the pier from the uh, the coast. It's, it's great. Yeah, cool. Should we get back in the train? We'll do. Yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be very late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the passengers be like, where, where on earth is our, where on earth is our driver gone? He's taking a stroll down the pier. Yeah. <laughs> I would be concerned if that happened in real life. But yeah. <laughs> Just because I saw the question in the chat quite a few times about the lightning in one of the scenarios, um, we had it in there, but then had to remove it because TSW currently does not feature an option to turn off. Um, strobe lighting which could be dangerous for some people um, that's why it is not there anymore yeah I think as you go into the Vice of John Tunnel you'll also pass one of the new sort of infrastructure assets that we made it's, I think it's the power disruptor or power distributor I think that's what it's called it's, it's the unique little box so it's embedded in the more which has got a lot of attention as well. They're, they're a dot all and there's some of the women and yeah, there's some unsourced support packets. I'm hoping to see a few sparks here. Ah! Hey, there we go. There we go. Like we mentioned before, these depend on, on the weather condition, how wet dry it is. Uh, so you'll have more sparks in the winter or in, on a rainy day than you'll have in a dry, hot summer day. Someone in the uh, chat was asking for sparks action, maybe. Uh, pretty much as soon as you did it, yes, but <laughs> so you, you aim to please. On point. Perfect. <laughs> it's just, just one of these little details that I really like, especially the fact that it has this, this sound to it just makes it a bit more realistic. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so cool. It's almost like you're driving a completely different route. Yeah. I didn't have a proper look at it in the snow, uh, to be fair. That's, that's good, I like it. Yeah, steam train and electric railroad museum. So this is a separate route. Yes, it's available on all 
uh, all platforms now. Um, there is a bundle as well available if people are interested in getting both routes, but yes, it is a separate route. Um, the initial Isle of Wight route uh, has had some improvements done to it. If you want to check out the full list, they're on our forums, uh, on our announcements forum for Train Sim World 2. So you can definitely check those out and uh, take a look and see what's on there. Um, but this is a separate route slash loco. I feel that's that's important to mention. You don't need to have the old one to play the new one, or the new one to play the old one. So they're they're completely different, um, and you won't be able to take the old train on the new route or the new train on the old route. Um, yeah. Except if you create your own scenario with the off the rails mode, mode, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the, the, obviously the reason for that is the fact that the the platforms are, yeah the platforms have been raised. The tracks have been lowered. Uh, it's just it doesn't the infrastructure is yeah, too different. Yeah, you can see the, the stark difference between the two platform heights just there on the right as well, how, how much it's changed. Oh yeah, that, that's very cool to see because they, they were oh, yeah. uneven in their height um, in real life. So it should all match the, the reference images as well. So this, this is one of the areas that I had to, uh, to press the Josh. I was like, whoa, I had no idea what was happening in that back corner on that station and the pictures I could find. Because <laughs> the ec other exit has been uh, fenced off, so I could only see it from one side on, on Google Earth. <laughs> but uh, he was able to fill in the gaps for me, so it should be uh, just how it looks in real life. And also that bridge was repainted as well, because in reality it's it's been repainted. And the original one looks quite rusty. This one's got a fresh coat of paint and new lights as well, which you can see. Again, that's a prime example of what I'm not really sure why they put a gate there. It's in the middle, <laughs> and then you can walk right on the other side. Of it. But uh, trust me, that that is actually how it looks. It, it, it <laughs> seems weird. It seems really weird. I mean, these things are just made of steel or something. But you guess you can I walk think it's on like them. Foam. Um, foam. Yeah, don't don't walk on these, obviously. Uh, uh, it looks like it should be to stop like trolleys or something like that, or something mm -hmm. on wheels. Mm -hmm. But I can't think of what on wheels you would have around that area me neither yeah it's very odd because when we had some of the preview images i heard someone complain about it they said that it looked very strange and then immediately there was comments that say no actually that's exactly how it looks huh. so i'm not the only one that thinks it looks strange <laughs> no definitely not the uh, depot also got a bit of log as well that's been uh, raised and done up a bit inside And there's a new uh, railing walkway for the new train height as well. Yeah. As well as there's a gate in the back so the player can walk all the way around through the back of the depot. So this one right here. Yeah. This is great to get the, um, I suppose, the developer's view on something like this. Obviously, myself and Jasper can talk quite a lot about lots of different things, but it's really great <laughs> to be able to understand from a uh, uh, an artist's perspective, actually, how all of this stuff gets put together, the little minute details that we might miss uh, to get that kind of fuller picture of everything that's gone into, uh, yeah. into this add-on. I'd yeah. like to thank anyone who's familiar with how I would like to know will appreciate just the, the detail I've put to put all like, the placement of the signs. And they're all slightly different in each station, but they should match how you look in reality. Things like the ones about not crossing the other rail. Apparently it's uh, to deter walking because they're meant to be very difficult to walk over those. Uh... Mm -hmm. I feel like I could take that. <laughs> yeah, the the real ones that. don't look too sharp. I mean, you can see, you see like um, uh, things to deter, like pigeons and things like that. They look horrible with loads of spikes and stuff like that. And I feel like maybe you need something that's a bit more uh, aggressive to deter trespassers. Yeah. Maybe they just look rather nasty. Uh, did you show off some of the new signal uh, signals in close detail, Jasper? Just the actual, like, for example, at Brady? We, we did in the last stream, but I would suggest just do it again um, if, we, if we come to Brady. Because it's yeah, there's, a, there's the featherhead head ones as well. Yeah, which exactly. Are, which are really nice, because it was all, I think it was all done modular, so they could choose which ones you need. They all snap together nicely. Yeah. 
The Yanandunks asked, what are the collectibles? Uh, so we can show the, we can show one of them. My favourite one a little bit later <laughs> on. Uh, but uh, we've got the um, the route maps, which at the moment uh, we're aware there are there is a little bit of a problem with, and it has been fixed. But we're just waiting to be able to put it out in a post-release patch. What are the other collectibles, Jasper? So we have. Um I'll, I'll skip on yours for now. Um, we have a coup poster and we have um, a signal, signal, uh, a yacht hat. Um, if you think? want to stop, sorry to cut across. If you want to show off small book, or yep. will that yep. do for another time? Yep, absolutely. Um, and I th think they're all here. Yes, they should be if you've not already picked them up. That that's <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking about. I think I already picked them up, but we'll have a look anyway. So a small work was another station that, that got a lot of love. Um, there's new, well, they're old in real life, but they're new assets. There's some uh, old bins at each of these that uh, small book. There's new signage that's kind of retro signage, and there's also the ticket office and the old waiting room. You can see that's a new asset. That's that's one of the collectibles. This poster. I'm going to show it for too long. And then if you come over here, that's what. James was just talking about. It has way more detail now. Yeah, there's this new sign behind you, and then if you run to the end of the platform, there's a uh, new uh, sort of vintage uh, warning signs to say don't cross the rail. And they should match all the reference images as well that we, we took on our survey. Oops. Then just in here, you can walk into the ticket office now, uh, have a look, take your rivet mark, your signal man's hat, and uh, sell tickets. Quite cool, I think. Just different from what we had in the previous route, and uh, yeah, much higher quality asset. Yeah, anything just to sort of add more uh, unique places for the player to visit. It's, uh, it's great fun. Yeah. Uh, so, oh. did you mention the other collectible, or is that uh, a surprise for later? Okay. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna show a little bit later. I think some people already know what it's all about, but. <laughs> uh, I, it was my favourite one last week, and I want one in my life. I want a real life one. <laughs> it'd be it'd be great to have it. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping I will find one because I picked up quite a few. Um, yeah, we'll see. This is actually one of the new signals. Yeah, they're, they're dotted all over the room. It's possible different heights of heroes through different heights. Huh. And different types of bases. And they're, they've all been modeled based on the reference bridges, so like every single variety of spot has, has been recreated. I think that's like the mid height one. And yeah, you've got the lovely new rankings as well that we play. Yeah, just the base with the updated detail. It's a lock. Yeah, it's, it, without without sort of sounding like I'm repeating myself too much, it is these kinds of little details that again you might gloss over. You might only ever you might not never you might never see it until you have played it about thirty times. Yeah. But again, it just adds that little bit of extra depth. Yeah. It, it definitely does, and I, I think you know it's the kind of thing that you may not notice, but if you don't go and do those details, you will notice. I think we all know that something's missing if you don't pull these extra little details. And things like think the signals and the signage, it goes a long way to sort of uh, push the believability of the movie. It, it just adds to the overall look and feel, and that's what it in the end, yeah, makes makes a good movie. Is there anything within the uh, the train itself, yes, that you want to show off at this stage? Oh, yeah. We've got about a little bit more to go until we get to braiding. That's um, the posters, which are really nice. Which that stuff's going, that's, it's fine. That's fine. a good Runaway idea. train, <laughs> runaway train will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so oh, we have all... some four-up challenges. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we have these, these route maps here and the posters that we created. They're also um, yeah, made up to the theme of the original ones. Then we have the actual 
steam railway poster they were keen to send us this so we could edit it. Um, then a nice little detail on these ones on, on the route map is that in real life you'll have images of what is there on the, on the station and we thought about adding these with stock images or with screenshots from the actual route um, and we felt that the second way was, was way cooler to give a proper impression of the train uh, and the route. And so there again, I'll probably head back because I'm getting nervous. <laughs> but we need to come back. I mean, again, if I, if I were a passenger right now, I'd be incredibly nervous, but... <laughs> yeah, the driver's come back to go look at his own post, it's not a good look. Nope. Breaking and braiding. Oh yeah. We will need to go back and have another look because the interlocking or the locking mechanism between the two coaches is quite cool. Definitely worth having a look. And we're now approaching. That's the yeah, first. It perhaps a little bit quicker than we would like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one of the other news. Oh yes, as well. Won't manage to stop in time. So, yeah, that's showing you if you're going to the left or the right track. And then, yeah, you just saw how the light changes at the bottom. Yeah, That's these are really cool. cool assets to make. They're, they're mm -hmm. a lot of fun. There was so much like detail went into them. I think it really shows that they're. I think they're probably one of my favorite assets on the route, outside the, the signal hut. <laughs> that speaks for itself, I think. I think asked a good question. How long did it take? How long did it take uh, the folks at River to rework the route? Uh, I, I was the so artist on this, uh, not including the route, but I was just making all the assets and the stations and I, I actually can't remember, I think it was like two or three months, I actually moved house through all this, it, it feels like a blur. <laughs> Obviously but, uh, preparations for something like this start way before that, uh, so it goes yeah, a long time into researching and making sure we have everything that we need, even though we already did this route before. Um, yeah. And then the artist starts working on it. Or the artists started working on it. I think just past the crossing is one of those uh, power disruptors of, uh, that I was talking about. It's a nice little asset as well. Oh, yeah. Just sort of expands the sort of track infrastructure. I think it's just beyond the crossing. There's a, there's a few along the dodge along. Oh, it's on, on the other one? Yeah. Yeah, it's that one. It's quite cool. One of the assets that you that you actually would find on the street. Yeah, I think it just all goes a long way, just that extra detail to, to make the route special. And then we have the crossing again. That's like that's the small signal. I think, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's the smallest height. Like I said, there's multiple bases, some of them uh, have these sort of canisters on the side as well. Wilkins has asked, can we see the lake abrading? Is that sure. modelled? Um, it might be a bit hard to see with the snow. I, I think, think so, yeah, it's probably, you can, you can definitely see it at Lake Station. Um, yeah, don't think you can see it from here. These doors are really annoying. <laughs> I, I it's not the first time. Not the first time we've uh, nearly left without uh, oh. closing the doors. Nope. <laughs> I heard these quite a few times. It's cool. I mean, they sound like the real, the real thing. They move like the real thing. Um, which is incredible slow, but yeah, that's the way it is in real life. Um, but yeah. Shall we get to Sandown, uh, and then I think, should we, should we call it there for the evening? Sounds good to me, yeah. Cool. So we've got about mile, uh, 1.6 miles before we kind of finish up at Shanklin, oh, sorry, at Shanklin, Sandown even. Um, 
so kind of opportunities really to wax lyrical about anything else that you guys would like to wax lyrical about with, with the route. Uh, Jasper, I'll start first. Is there anything else that we would you'd want to make sure that players were aware of before um, before we finish tonight? I actually think we've covered everything in this in the stream and this in the previous one. Um, yeah, just the overall love to detail, attention to detail um, in the train, in the routes, the new scenery that's spread out to the left and right. Um, new details like the signals, the arcing effect, um, the the new water, uh, the the details like the signal hut or the, the ticket office. Um, yeah, that's that's probably that's probably it. Okay, and, and over to you, James. And what, yeah, and I, I, I think Jasper's taken Jasper's taken quite a lot there. Yeah, so, I think so. <laughs> Still on my thunder, but I think yeah, everything's kind of been covered. Mainly just the, the detail, that extra level of polish or um, depth to the roots, and just the fun little details we've had time to add. But I also want to just take the time again, just to, to say thank you to the fans. The, the, the response and like overwhelming support from the release has been amazing for me to see as an artist. It just makes it all like all worth it. It's just it's been incredible uh, day to day. Yeah, I'm I'm super made up. Of for you folks because I know that there's been uh, there's been some challenges and there's been some quite a lot of feedback for, from, from some of the, the previous routes that, that you've been able to put together and I think we've done some really good improvements to those routes over the course of the last sort of 12 months or so um, but this feels like it's pretty much ready to go out of the box which is which is absolutely fantastic and as I say lots of lots of players seem to be really positive about what you've been able to create which is great and that's that's obviously what we're doing this for so yeah, I think it was the high one of the thing, I think it's been touching briefly, it's just the sound, but the work that George has had with his playing has, has been phenomenal. I know that's saying that Bill yeah, had issue in the past with sound, but I think he's really nailed it, and the root sounds fantastic. And we will go and do, maybe when we get to the station, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this, Jasper, but can we do the final collectible, please? I'm hoping there's one, yeah. You've snatched them all already. <laughs> so cute! <laughs> but yeah, I think there should be one left. Um, uh, Londo Sparks asks, what's the optimization on this route like? Is it playable on the Steam Deck? Optimization is good. I think if you watched last week and obviously this week, we also have the FPS counter in the top right of the shot. Um, hitting at least 45 most of the time. Um, Steam Deck compatibility. I don't know if... I'll have to double check that because I think we are playable on Steam Deck, but I don't think we're in a position where we're kind of like recommended for it yet. So I think it's playable. Um, this particular route, don't know. Uh, route slash loco, don't know. But the game itself is is, is playable. I don't know, Jasper, James, if you've got any other... No. Th anything else you can add to that? No, no I think that about covers it. I think you should be good if you can play the original route. Uh, uh, the original game. But, yeah. Don't know for sure. Oh, but Brian Mainline might be pretty sluggish on it. That is much more memory intensive than this. Uh, this this add-on is. So I would imagine you're you'd be in much better shape on that than you would be on Brian Mainline. Sorry, uh, uh, London commuter. Oh, there it is. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's the final collectible. It's a uh, Dino plushie. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, I want one in real life. River, please set up a merch store for me, please. No, I've got the model move on there. We can 3D print it. <laughs> oh. well, 3D printer would be way too hard. We need, we need a plushy thing. It needs, to be, it needs to be cuddly. That was actually a stroke of luck because when we were in development for this and we planned the dinosaur stuff, uh, they actually found some like, the largest dinosaur remains in Isle of Wight during the development. I couldn't believe it. It's, it's, I mean that that area and obviously the Dorset Jurassic Coast is is renowned for its fossils and uh, the things that you might find uh, underneath the uh, the sand or the or the earth. So, yeah, I mean it's a great great shout to include the dinos in there. I think um, as well the uh, liver from Forty Three had dinosaurs on it at one point as well. Yes, I think oh, so. They had a temp I've seen some photographs of like, I don't know if it was a temporary livery, but there was one that was coated in dinosaurs and one of the last ones in service before they switched over. I think it was a livery that they created together with a with the children's hospital. Don't know if I got that correctly. Um but they painted the train in, in dinosaurs. That was quite cool actually. It looked really cool. 
very cute. Just one. Like says, I, I kind of want to leave them here instead of collecting them. I completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, yeah. <laughs> Just something uh, whilst we're here. This is the, 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 the gangway between the two. Um, cars and you can't open the door if you just click on it. I can open the window, obviously. Um, but in order to to go through, you need to what it says on this this green thing. Uh, so we press the button, then you can hear the door unlock. Open the door. Open the other one. Close this one. Close this one. And they were through. Quite cool. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. We have, I think, shown quite a lot tonight, and as I say, finishing on the dino plushie is obviously what I wanted at the start, so I'm very happy <laughs> with that. Uh, we'll call it there for this evening. That's a really nice shot as well, actually, to finish on, I think, Yes, but so let's, let's leave it on this. Do you want to put the face cams on just uh, for the sure. final bit? Sure. Uh, that's that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. One by one, we come back onto screen. <laughs> Lovely. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, it is available now. Uh, if you are interested, if you like what you've seen tonight or you want to check out last week's live stream, you can do. Um, but it is available now on all platforms to get. Uh, pricing is available on those different pages, but it's, uh, it's very reasonably uh, priced, uh, 14.99 in pounds. I can't remember what those are in uh, in uh, in dollars and euros, but use that as a guide. Um, and uh, it's it's great. I really love it. I think, as I say, I've had plenty of positive, nice memories on the Isle of Wight, and it's bringing them all back going onto this route. So um, I think you guys have done an absolutely stellar job, um, and uh, I I know that the community have come back with some really positive stuff as well. So thank you very much for joining us tonight, James. It's been a brilliant debut. Thank you very much for coming onto the live stream for us it's it's always wonderful to get a uh, uh, an artist viewpoint on some of this stuff because you'll be able to notice things that we won't be able to so brilliant thank you very much i hope right. you come on to another one soon oh it's been great fun so uh, just seeing the comments has, has just made my day lovely and uh, yes but as always thank you very much look forward to seeing you in the next time uh, we uh, will be featuring uh, rivet games on a on a live stream um please let us know actually what you'd like us to 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 show in the future because we obviously do a lot of these for things like previews and for let's plays of, of new rivet content but if there's anything else you'd like us to, to do or to do collaboratively that we're, we're open we'd love to try and sure. do some more stuff so um just let us know what you like and uh I'm on the forums at DTGGAD, uh, and Jasper, you are River Jasper, aren't you? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so just let us know. If you think there's anything that we could do, then chuck it in. Uh, but without further ado, uh, thank you everybody for watching at home. We are going to go and jump in a cold bath because it is <laughs> very, very warm. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us tonight, and uh, Jasper has an exam tomorrow, so good luck on that, Jasper. I hope, hope it all goes well. Um, and uh, as I say, it looks like at least for the time being, we've uh, we've made a few people happy in the community so uh, <laughs> thank you very much everybody for watching hope you have a lovely evening stay safe stay cool stay hydrated and um, we'll be back next week no sorry won't be next back next week it's uh, it's tuesday today we'll be back tomorrow with ralph on tv see you later awesome thank you bye, bye, bye. thank you very much bye